Hello, everybody. It's Stefan. And I speak Italian, but I also speak English with an Italian accent sometimes because I'm just that chic and sophisticated. This episode is equally chic and sophisticated because it has two amazing guests, not just one. It's got Dana Cortez from the Dana Cortez Show and DJ Automatic from the Dana Cortez Show. And he also DJs, surprisingly enough, the name didn't give it away. Ebra, Ebra, so we're going to move on. And I just want to tell you, it was such a cool episode. Dana and DJ Automatic, they also work with Anthony A, who has been on one of the previous episodes. I can't remember which number because I don't know which number we're on right now. However, they are amazing people, all three of them. And Dana went in a little bit about how the Dana Cortez show came to be with a little bit of help and support from DJ Automatic. And now she is the first Latin American woman to have a nationally syndicated radio show, which is freaking amazing after all the stuff that she had to do. And we talk a little bit about her trials and tribulations. We also talk about DJ Automatic, his real name, and uh, his other DJ names that he tried to take before DJ Automatic, as well as so many other life lessons, little pearls, sapphires. We just dug up so many gems. And I want to sprinkle you guys with all these shiny gems. You just have to sit there and close your eyes and listen. Let it take you in. Unless you're watching on YouTube, then also keep your eyes very open because I edited the poo out of this episode. And I think it's delightful. Cameraman Josh, by the way, he, uh, he ended up producing well he ended up filming the episode which was really cool and uh, that's why it's really crisp clear and there are multiple angles because i couldn't do that stuff by my old self so thank you joshua james boyle for all of that and thank you to all you fans you guys are absolutely incredible you guys i wouldn't be here without you i'd probably be more productive at my day job and i might be a vice president by now but nope i'm here doing a little podcast and it's amazing. It's my passion and I love it. And I love you guys. Thank you so much for all the support. If you guys want to support Dana and DJ Automatic, listen to the Dana Cortez show. It has the podcast now, so you can listen whenever you want and uh, follow them on Instagram. Give them some love. Follow me on Instagram, subscribe, leave a review if you haven't already. And guys, I'm doing my Facebook live shows now every Thursday, six o'clock Pacific time, nine o'clock Eastern time. And it's a whole lot of fun. We give advice together. You guys are in the comments, helping me out. I'm asking you questions. We're interacting. Um, it, it is also from a distance. So I don't get to feel your breath on me, but I imagine it. So I keep the room nice and hot. So I feel like there's constant breath just falling down upon me, making me all clammy. So that's the experience that I like. If you guys want to raise the heat up or just turn off the air while you do it, you guys can feel my multitude of breaths all over you. So it could be like a hot breathy little episode. Yeah, that doesn't sound appealing to you. Yes, it does. That's what I'm hearing from your hot breath. Yeah, I left the AC off again. Oops. Anyway, um, before I go, that's all I had to say. Oh, Trash or Treasure Show. Did I say that already? If I didn't, Trash or Treasure Show, that link is going to be in the show notes for that event, Tuesday, the 19th of October, 2021. All right. I think it's time to get started. What do you guys think? Big deep breath through the nose. And here we go. Shall we snip snip into the episode? Am I going to enter? Am I holding? I feel like holding the microphone. I don't want to do power stance, but. That is good, right? Yeah, this is good. I feel yeah, like this like is like good. This. You guys. We have mic stands. So natural. It's good. This is yeah. good. Okay. It's good. Yeah, this is, yeah. This is perfect. Good. I feel so at home. Actually, I feel like uh, a little princess in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> the red it looks amazing and uh, i'm here at the power 98.3 studios yes yes with the amazing well what podcast are we on everybody and everybody that has subscribed and listened to many episodes it's a comedy advice podcast with Stefan satani joining me today very special guest two shining stars actually there's so many stars in this room i feel like I'm in a constellation. Oh, Is that how beautiful. you feel? There's so many stars. I feel like Mufasa could be there and be like, remember. I feel like you might be the brightest star right now. <laughs> Only because you're to my right and I'm glaring. Oh, oh. that's what else. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're feeding off the glare. Uh, you know what? I will. Yeah. I will star leech as much as I can. Okay. And you know leech. they say that stars will eat uh, entire like solar systems now. I don't want to know about uh, your sex life. Is that a threat? Life. Is that a threat? <laughs> I feel. I rats. feel that was intimidating. Okay. Wow. I'm not what trying a, to talk about that. I was you're, a power you're married. Frag. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I, I've been eaten by her solar <laughs> <laughs> her star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Man. All what, right. What lovely banter. And yes. the introductions haven't even been made yet. Star number one, Dana Cortez from the Dana Cortez Show. Clap, 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 Yay. clap, clap. Thank you very much, Steph. And thank you for inviting me. Oh, and thank you for joining. And thank you as well to DJ Automatic. Woo-woo! Clap, 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 clap. Yes, thank you. Pipe, 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 pipe. We'll put an effect in post, so it'll be great. <laughs> It'll be exciting. I, and um, the two out of three of the Dana Cortez show, there was uh, <laughs> another member that I chose not to invite, Anthony A, <gasps> a.k.a. Cheesy Fry. I think. <laughs> a.k.a. Uh, oh. Organic Hot Cholo Cheeto. Hey! A.k.a. I'm sweating oh, behind sweating. the scenes, dude. I'm glistening like a like a honey bacon right now. I am sweating right now, guys. I, I knew I smelled I, barbershop yeah, and dirt. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I What's knew up? it. What's oh, up, man. dude? Is that more fr- cameras than the head mugshot right here? This is a lot going on. Oh, it's dude. beautiful. One what more star just reared its its lovely head. So, uh, you uh, angelic thank presence. Thank you very much, Anthony, for. Uh, thank you for that appearance. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You're the, you're really leaving? He's leaving. Oh, all right. He's gonna go do his own comedy hey, thing. Hey, kill it tonight, okay? Yes. Oh, all right. Thank you. Much love. Take care. Bye. Oh, yes. You forgot your cookie. You forgot your cookie. Okay. Okay. All right. right. I'll give it to you in the morning. All right. Perfect. Ciao. I'm going to eat those fucking cookies. (laughs) Yeah, please eat them all. Don't don't save any for him. He didn't deserve them. (laughs) I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Have you, you guys have enjoyed a crumble cookie before. Oh, Oh, they're amazing. They're they're just amazing. They're butter. Best cookie. Have you ever put one of those cookies on a napkin? Yeah, they just, just. They Oil. just absorb yeah. the, uh, yeah, the napkin, they absorb the napkin. It's, no. into buttery grease wonder. It's the next, just great. The next day, the napkin's like, oh, my God, I had way too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But speaking of way too much, I have just had way too much fun listening to you guys in the morning or in the evening because you guys are in the podcast now. Yes, yes, we are doing our own podcast, which isn't quite as, I mean, obviously, you've been doing it a lot longer than we have. Well, yeah. I mean, the added experience and charisma of all three of you guys. And the chemistry, man, it's like an alchemist just created some radio gold there. You would think we were married or something. Yeah, it was all like- <laughs> <laughs> So we are married, and Anthony really is our, you know, our best friend. We all hang out outside of radio hours. We happen to be very lucky that we were working together. Mm-hmm. Um, not many people get to work with people they like. I hear horror stories about, you know, uh, people that are cast and forced into situations. For us, um, yeah. it really is like you said. That whole chemistry thing is real. It's not. It's not contrived it's it's the real deal we love each other we got that, love for one another and That's, we fight like it too yeah we do. oh yes you can you we can but it's so it's so nice and it, i did i was afraid of that actually about the <laughs> chemistry just being fake because i watched sex in the city and then i realized sarah jessica parker was not a friend of the other one i don't even know kim Stephen. kim cattrell kim cattrell do you know how i know that name because my Samantha. wife watches this show constantly does your, does your wife does your girl make you watch sex in the city she makes me yeah the tv's hers but you love it right don't you love sex in the city now that you watch it it's uh i mean on air it's fantastic yes i'm gonna admit it it is it is incredible writing it's incredible acting the, t- it, com- the comedic timing is perfection it is i mean it's a well is it a classic now i don't oh, it's think it's totally that a old. classic it's 20 something years old imagine it's that old isn't it that old it's pretty old 99 i, don't I know. think when it came out 99 yeah that's that was it that was so it. imagine yes it is absolutely and you're a comedian you're a stand-up comedian. Uh, yes yes you know how difficult it is to to carry uh you know an audience like that imagine it's stood the test of time oh it did a timeless piece of work and i think uh yeah it was just excellent up and down do you dj automatic though you look like you may have some uh some thoughts on sex in the city i've just watched every episode because she loves it um but i'll say this (laughs) i did watch it before i knew her so i i I had seen it before because i thought it was funny um the reason i knew who kim cattrall was is because i thought she was the funny one on the show oh yes and and so that's yeah and so uh I mean, I w- would I say I'm a huge fan of it? Not so much. But I do like it. I appreciate it for what it is. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yes. I think that's fair. But I just, I love listening to you guys in the morning. You guys have so much good banter. I know you, you and Anthony A afterwards have the two dudes, one studio. <laughs> yes. Um, and it feels like you guys have created such a good thing. And then you as well, Dana. I mean, you are the first Latina or the Mexican American woman yeah. to be on a nationally syndicated give him the whole spew give him, give him the whole spew Dana. well i mean in radio if you if you listen to radio uh you know anywhere in the country it's kind of the same makeup you get a guy yeah. and a girl and another yeah. guy and th the male is you know the lead and everybody kind of laughs around him and 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 that's what it is and that's there's nothing wrong with that there's plenty of talented people in radio right. but right. that is not all there is right so it was in, in, an incredible opportunity for me to be able to do this to not op only represent women but Latina women Mexican Americans in particular were the most underrepresented in media period wow. I just saw this uh, article that came out Netflix did a study I think when it comes to um, Latinos it's four percent of media representation that we have oh yeah and, and in the images man we talk about you know we talk about HBO and some of these things you see Chola gangster you know you see yeah, uh, nanny yeah. you see housekeeper and that's it and so it was important to me to come in and say, look, I do come from the barrio. I do come from nothing. But you don't have to, I don't have to be a caricature of my culture mm -hmm. to be successful. People know who I am. They know what I rep. I can be real. I can be myself. And I can also be educated and smart. And maybe funny sometimes too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, maybe I'm like man, that was that was like, I could just feel like. A... Well, because you know, I get passionate about it. But I know like, the show's funny. Yeah, the I show mean, is funny. You know, yes. we really are funny. We're down to earth. But I'm glad you asked that question because I think representation is important. If you see it, you can be it. I think that's so. It's so right, and it actually reminded me. I had Steve Trevino, who's a comedian, on the podcast a couple hundred episodes ago, and he was talking about how when he was trying to get into acting and everything, oh. it was just these stereotypical Latino oh. roles. And even in comedy, he was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. So he ended up self-producing. He ended up going his own way and creating this comedy that uh, the, being Latino is a flavor for him, but it's like not the identity that people stereotype around. I love that you said that, and I, I don't know who this man is, but I'm going to look him yeah, up I now. Do. Yes, you do. Steve Torvino? Yes, you know who he is. I bet we've interviewed him, haven't we? I, I think I'm you sorry, may Yeah, I was going to say yes. I'm sorry. I think now that you said that, yeah, I'm like, I'm okay. We we'll cut that out in post. Yeah. I, I know. <laughs> Leave it in, Steve. Keep me up. We'll do another conversation. No, I really just, I think about what you just said. It's so important, Steph, and you said that. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be Mexican-American. It's who I am. Right, right. And, and I don't speak any differently. My family's the same. You know, my, mm -hmm. we have the same issues. It's just difficult because some people automatically think, oh, well, you must think or dress or act a certain way i'm like we're just like everybody else right just and the more that we see in media from comedy mm -hmm. to movies to radio to all you know all of these platforms the more normalized the culture will become yes it's just yes. hey everybody likes a mexican restaurant right Oh man! Come on, man! Delicioso. Come on in! <laughs> oh God! I, I just ruined that You're moment. You're bilingual. You're bi I didn't know. I, so I, I actually, I a lot of my fans don't know this. I speak Brazilian Portuguese. Do you really? Italian. Oh wow! Yes, I uh, Italian because my family's Italian and everything. Brazilian Portuguese because I ended up working for Rosetta Stone when I moved to Jersey at first. And I wanted to learn another language. That's and I, incredible. Well, thank you. I don't speak it well, but I, I speak it. It doesn't matter. But you that means you speak three languages. I only speak one. So, uh, and I am like I'm constantly embarrassed by the fact that I can only speak one language. Because oh. I'm fluent in Spanish, and he said to me, actually, we just had this combo last week. He's like, I want to learn. We were in Mexico last week. How so. hard was it to learn? Don't lie. To learn. To, um, the, to learn Italian. Portuguese first, and Italian. Yes. It's the, uh, so I'll say this: the first language is the hardest, and then oh. after that. Especially if it's in the same family, Portuguese wasn't as hard, but Italian it was pretty hard. Really? Um, yeah. Okay, that is not. So encouraging. you think you probably pick up Spanish <laughs> pretty quickly then? But I will say, yeah, I, I can understand it. Okay, yeah. my wife and I were a tag team because she's from Brazil, so oh, I okay. ended That's up. Why the, yeah, Portuguese. yeah, Portuguese is so similar. I had this lady wreck into me in Houston, and she was speaking Portuguese, and I was, and and I knew I was like, I don't know what she's saying, but I know what she's saying. It was yeah. so weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? It's super similar. It's okay. very, very right, similar. Then. Well, we should get you Rosetta Stone, and with my help. That's what that's what I was gonna say. Rosetta Stone does work, and I did it the way that it was recommended too. So they say do it forty five minutes a day, two to three times a week. That's it. Yeah, 
And then do you have time for that? I do have time for Bam. that. Yeah, wow. give it a try. Right. You know what? Six months from now, and six, six months, months you should be able now, to complete it. <laughs> 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 oh man! But that's so supportive of you, DJ Automatic. And I also wanted to talk about the great support that you have also had for your wife. I mean, being on the show together is awesome. Yes. You also, I feel like, have been able to empower her to. Bef- it wasn't called the Dana Cortez no, show. No, it always. used to be called the House Party, and uh, it was us and another guy and it was actually dana and him before i was involved yeah and he uh he was really upset when i came to the table with we should call it the dana cortez show and he, and he was like why and he, i was like because when we go anywhere everybody wants to talk to dana she's the immediate like immediate and he was like well they want to talk to me too and i was like not like they want to talk to dana that's like they really want like Dana's this is the before star. We were together, this by is the before way. There we were together. This is before we were together. Sexy yeah. time involved yeah. or anything. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was like, Dana's the star of the show. We should make her the star of the show. I was like, the house party doesn't make sense. It's not a. Yeah. It's like, what does it say? It doesn't say anything. Yeah. And so, yeah. We, and then I was like thinking of like Howard Stern or like oh, iconic yeah, like yeah, radio yeah. personalities. I was like, every show has like a lead and Dana's obviously the lead, even though at this point I don't think she was considered the lead, but she was the lead of the show. So I was like, let's make her the lead. I think it takes a strong man to do that too. He's, he's holding back so much. Uh, He's being kind in his words, you know, but a lot of men have a problem with, uh, I I don't even think that's the thing. I just like winning. (laughs) I like winning. And like, I felt like that was the way that we were going to win. And that's, that that's the truth. I mean, at the same time, but I don't want you to be like, Oh, he's empowering women. I I love women. And of course I want to empower women, but I'm not that nice a guy. Daughter. I have three (laughs) daughters. You better empower women. But I, I, I love women obviously, but I'm just saying it's like, I like to win. And I knew that was going to win. And it made sense. Yeah, it made sense. Why not go with what makes sense? But you have to understand that a lot of men don't feel that way. You know, a lot of men. Well, I think they get intimidated. Yes. 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 yes, And I'm not. Yeah, I'm not intimidated by women or intimidated by being second or third mic or whatever that is. That's okay with me. I'm not. It's not a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. I have my other DJ stuff. And I think that's if I didn't have a DJ career that was separate, it might probably mess with me a little bit more. But it's like at this point, it's the Dana Cortez show. And and I definitely want to talk about your DJ career in a second. I know we're just scratching the surface. Speaking of which, I believe it was sixth grade where you first started to fall in love with DJ. Oh yeah, sixth. Intrigued by the scratch. Yeah. How do you know that? I, you did some. I did yeah, some research. You did some research. <laughs> um, Stefan talked to Sir Muddy. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, listen to the show. No. Um, yeah, sixth grade is when uh, my friend moved from New York to the bottom of my street, and uh-huh. his older brother had turntables, and that's when I was like, oh. I'm going to be a DJ. That is, yeah. it's so cool when you have these magic moments like that, where I, I wish I would have a magical moment for when I was like, I'm going to be a podcaster. I think it was when I was living in my mom's basement after college, <laughs> but. <laughs> how do you, okay, tell us how the podcast came about. How did that, happen? Yeah, how did how did about? this happen? Because you've been doing this for four years. Most yes. people I know never stick with their, their I'm going to start a podcast. Three weeks later, it's over. Well, how yeah. do you manage to do this for four years? <laughs> Well, uh, Eric Griffin, I had him on the podcast. And he was from uh, Workaholics, and he's also a stand-up comedian. And he told me, you only fail if you quit. And so I'm just not going to quit yet. And I haven't failed yet, and I've been able to speak with so many that. amazing people. And I think that's what keeps me going, to be honest, because every time I have an interview with somebody, I try and dive into their world. So the Dana universe and the DJ Automatic universe, splendid. Better than Marvel, I might say. But <laughs> I feel like I get to know a little bit about you guys. I mean, just your struggle, how you were. I, I had listened to something where you were talking about you shined shoes, you were a bartender. You did all sorts of jobs. Just that- A lot, yes, I did, before radio. Um, most people know, if you've listened for a minute or you know or yeah. two, I had my first child when I was 15. I come mm-hmm. from, I mean, I said this uh, briefly, when I say impoverished, which I'm what I mean is poor, right? I grew up poor. <laughs> yeah. It's just a fancy way of saying it. And so my life was different. Otto and I this morning just said, he's like, I was out getting fake ID cards. I was changing diapers. Like, you know, literally our lives were so different. Uh-huh. Um, and I think that it's important to talk about those things so that other people who are listening who might be struggling, maybe not the same kind of struggles, fair, fair. but some type of situation know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel if you don't quit. Yes. And you also 
take advantage of opportunity. Don't be afraid because the whole that's a lie, too, when when you're told, oh, my God, I work so hard. You're going to get ahead by working hard. No, Stephanie, you need a break. You need an opportunity. Somebody's got to give it to you. And so when you when you make it, but hopefully you got to be ready for it. You got to be ready for it. But when you do make it, don't forget to reach back and help somebody else. Don't be an asshole. I, give I, somebody else opportunity because that's what changes lives. I love that so much. I almost want to take a five second pause to let that sink in to all the listeners. <laughs> I feel like it's so important to be able to do that. And I loved hearing about you guys. I, I know that the pandemic affected you guys as well because you being on the road, DJ Automatic, was yeah. really difficult to do. When it was like half was... my income just went, wow. It just, it just stopped. They, uh, your whole tour was canceled. Yeah, tours got canceled. All my gigs got canceled. And like I said, half my income. Luckily for me, I, I have radio. Which right. was like, I, whereas a lot of my DJ friends, they didn't have anything. And so oh, the, and some of them have moved on or not DJing anymore because they just decided that they couldn't chance it anymore. Dang. Uh, you, I mean, you go a year without a paycheck or a year, without, a year without a gig. Yeah, it's going to change your perspective on what you're doing. But I, I mean, I, I feel very fortunate that I am able to do two things that I love very, very much. And, and I thank God for radio that I could still like not have to just concentrate and on then DJing. the sun's gig came along and then the sun's yeah. gig came along and that was huge so that was like i swear to god when that sun's gig came along yeah at that point i was i had if you look at my instagram mm -hmm. there's a i there's a post where i was like i i was depressed i was i've been djing your whole life i've been djing my whole life and i was like what am i gonna do like i can't believe this is happening i i, I miss djing so much and then <sighs> i got a call like was like maybe within a, that maybe week and they were like, hey, you want to be the DJ for the Suns? And like me just oh. being a pompous asshole, I was like, oh, I'm the DJ for the Suns. <laughs> then I come to find out they'd ask like 20 people. <laughs> and, no, sir, you got to try yeah, out. So, no, you got to try out. Interview. So I tried out, but luckily it worked out for me. Nice. You didn't update your LinkedIn before you. Yeah. Okay. okay. That would have been awful. No, I, I didn't go on the air and say that I got the gig or anything, but I did call my mom. And then I was like, and then she was like, and then I had to tell her, I was like, oh, wait, I think there's other people trying out. <laughs> and I had told Dana, and, but of course, it's my wife. It's not that big a deal. Oh, we didn't tell anybody gosh. else. We told Anthony. Yeah. Oh, nice. But he's nice. within the same galaxy. D Anthony's, in the, Anthony's in, the, in the inner circle, so he knew. Yeah, he knew. That's totally fair. Yeah. Yeah. Spe speaking of inner circle, I had listened to an episode uh, a couple weeks ago where you guys were talking about Anthony sending you, accidentally sending you a text. Yes. And... And, and I believe he had accidentally sent me a text with the same thing. And so I don't. He's dating a new girl <laughs> and I don't ever want to put too much of his business out there. We allow right. him to be, right. you know, comfortable, whatever. And he's obviously comfortable with having this conversation. Right. And her initials are D.C. And he sent me something about I'm home, baby. I, I'm, I'm home safe, love, or I don't know what it was. Uh -huh. And he put a little emoji, and I said, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew, I knew he, he sent the wrong text message. And I told Otto, and he's just laughing. And that's actually how we started talking. I sent you the wrong text message. It was Oh, accident. yeah, that was, yeah, that's actually But how it we, became yes, a whole topic. Yes, I had heard about that, yeah. Yeah, it basically became now a topic. Now I'm worried. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be. That's oh, my gosh. But I just think it's funny because I'm sure you've done that. People do it all yes, the time. Exactly. Don't you exactly. wish you could return it? You could like take it back. Like Instagram, when you send a message, you can delete it. <sighs> Wouldn't it be great if you could do that with text messaging? I really wish. Oh. I don't understand why that's not a thing. I wish. Maybe it I, will I be. think I read somewhere that, that that's coming. That you'll be able to like erase a text message after you send it. We need to be able to do that. Yeah. I after, after the Drake album drops and everything, people are going to be sending <laughs> drunk, crazy tech me text messages to exes. We need to be able to take I mean, the text it would back. save a, it would save a lot of relationships. It, it would. would. I think so, too. Yes. And jobs, too. Yeah. I've, I've heard of some people that accidentally send nudes to their boss. Oh, man. If Anthony sent me a nude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No promotion is yeah, what you're yeah. saying. No. He doesn't get his raise. You know he won't get that raise. No. <laughs> no. Hopefully he's not sending those to his new girlfriend. Oh, nobody my wants to see Anthony naked. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> oh man, but I, I to the point of giving back too. I was gonna say I, I know that you guys were also doing the virtual job fairs where you guys were helping connect 
employers with people that were looking for jobs and i feel like that amongst all the other things that you guys donate to and it's that give your time to well you know stefan you just uh, you just talked about automatic and and you know the the COVID thing happening and and we had to mm-hmm. sit down at our kitchen table like everybody else did yeah, yeah and say okay half our income is gone we're we're in the middle of remodeling a home we bought uh that came we to an just end we here. just moved here it um, was uh everything happened just so quickly <sighs> The, the nightmare of trying to begin a new job like, with and then, COVID. And then we had just started, we had just started syndication for the most part. We've been about a year into it, but then, you know, like we keep, I keep reading all these radio people are getting fired. Everybody oh, get fired. People scary. are getting dropped left and right. I'm like, Oh no. I was like, man, we need to like come up with a budget. But we, Otto yeah, during that yeah. time, we're sitting at the table. He's like, you know what? Everybody else in the country is doing this. Let's do something. And I said, what do you want to do? He's like, I don't know. Let's try to find people jobs. Uh, after talking for a couple of minutes, we said, let's go Facebook Live. Let's have a job fair. And we started it, and it just turned into an extension of the show. We started doing it Monday through Friday. We found jobs for people all over the country. People moved. People day of were, were uh, going to work sites because we're syndicated now. So our wow. our affiliates, thank goodness, allowed us to uh, you know syndicate. Af- or take over their Facebook. Take over their Facebook. Mm-hmm. And so people in cities all across could talk to one another and hire and recommend and it just became we had some, a woman who moved from florida to arizona to arizona because of wow. it so it was just such a beautiful moment and, and what started out as just wanting to give back became this incredible extension of our show and we became one of the top 10 facebook radio syndication personalities in the country not trying to just mm. wanting to do something good so sometimes Things can happen even when you're not planning on them. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it, it was something we were doing to be nice, and it turned out to be a humongous blessing yeah, for us. It did. That is so cool. It did. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's so it's so nice, especially when there's so many bad things that are happening. Oh. Just just the fact that your guys' show, the chemistry, the segments, everything, it just brings a smile to people's faces. I feel as they're listening to it, and then these good acts that are helping people live essentially. No, I know. There's so many people that that. You don't have anything right now, right? We, we, Stephen, I, Stefan, you're making me feel like I'm actually a good guy. <laughs> I know. I'm like, Stefan, you want to join the show? <laughs> you're, right, you're making me feel good you about myself. You want to be the fourth mic? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh I just think God. that we, sometimes I'll, we'll sit there and nag about the craziest things. Right. And, oh, I want this and I want that. And then when I really think about the big picture, I'll get a message from somebody who lost their job and it's like, come on, Dana. Right. Be, right. be grateful. Instead of focusing so much on what I want, I need to focus yeah. on how far I've come and live in this moment. Yes. For just a little bit. Be happy right here in this moment, you know? So, so important. Um, well, we're about to get into some advice, but I, uh, I actually had a question for you, DJ Automatic. All right. How did, it's very innocuous, how did DJ Automatic come to be? How did the moniker was it was it something that you bestowed upon yourself or was it bestowed uh, okay. upon you? Uh, it, it, I'll make this. It's a long story, very short. Oh, please. it's a podcast. My real name is Merritt. Yes. Okay, so uh, my first DJ name was given to me by my friend George, and he it was DJ Mr. It. Okay. And I, that was on a couple different flyers, and I was like, I'm not Mr. It. That's not that. That's like I I don't live up to that. <laughs> that's, <laughs> And so uh, I had got another gig um, from another promoter, and he was he was like, "Hey man, I'm making the flyer." He's like, "What do you want?" Um, he was looking for a picture and like looking, and I was yeah. he was like, "So do you want me to go with Merit or do you want me to go with Mister It?" And I was just I was sitting in front of my computer, and I actually uh, was looking at this website called Sandbox Automatic. Yeah. And in school at that time, we were doing uh, automatic writing. Okay. Okay. And I just look, I just told him I was on the phone with him. I was like, you know what? Just go with DJ Automatic. And he was like, where did that come from? And I was like, I don't know. I just thought of it right now. That was and it. And that was it. And then I was DJ Automatic, and I've been DJ Automatic ever since. That's you know what? There's a lesson in that. Don't think too hard. No. Yes. Yeah. Put Mr. Some, it sucked. Yeah, Mr. Mr. It, Mr. it, Mr. it was too douchey for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty yeah, douchey. Yeah. So. <laughs> And it, yeah, it's not a good, not no. a good name at all for you. No, and you're uh, not douchey at all. You're not. I, I don't sense any douchiness. Not at him. all. He really isn't. He's really a good person. Like I feel like he's not getting giving himself enough credit. <laughs> <laughs> like seriously, the show, like everything. But anyway, we'll uh, argue about it later. Yeah, we'll let him dry off from that compliment <laughs> shower, and we'll get yeah, into yeah. <laughs> some advice. So I actually this first segment, it's a new one, and it's actually. For you, DJ Automatic, because right. 
pretty much every episode, Anthony A has a dad joke, and Dana Cortez seems to relish those, but DJ Automatic does uh, not. No, they're corny. Oh man! So, by the way, what what type of comedy do you like? Are you one of I'm, those? I'm a dry guy. I'm definitely dry. Uh, and also, I mean, like, who's like who are my favorite comedians? Or do you... no? I mean, what kind of comedy do you like? Uh, like I'm a dry guy. There's yeah. no wrong answer. Dry and witty. One. Yeah, dr- very uh, dry witty. Um, dark. I like dark comedies. I, I also like really stupid stuff. Like and like the, Anthony's dad jokes are stupid, but they're predictably stupid. I like something that's just like. <laughs> blows my mind with how stupid it is i think we can get there with this segment <laughs> okay so i'm gonna I, I think i have six here i'll i'll say them and then we'll see if you can okay. if you laugh if you don't laugh there will be a prize at the end okay i'm not sure what it's gonna be a crumble cookie the crumble two crumble cookies Ooh. of your choice i'm not laughing then <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> all right so we got this first one and these these are actually sent in by uh my fan kim so okay. she I don't know if she crafted these or if she found them, but I haven't seen them before. So hopefully they're original to you Let's as see well. See what you got, Kim. All right. How much does a rainbow weigh? How much does a rainbow weigh? Not much. They're pretty light. <laughs> no. Okay. What's the difference between Iron Man and Aluminum Man? What's the difference between Iron Man and Aluminum Man? You tell me. Iron Man helps people while Aluminum Man just foils everything. That's funny. Are you are you afraid to look me in the eye as we? No, I'm. I'm. I'm you can go to the are next one. It's the general next joke? disgust. <laughs> how much? How much does a pirate? Or how does a pirate start their prayers? How does a pirate start their prayers? Tell me. Our Father. Anthony's used that one before. Oh darn! Ow! What has the five finger? What has five fingers but isn't your hand? What has five fingers but isn't my hand? My hand. That was good. That one was the best one so far. Oh, God. <laughs> My wife said the same thing as I ran these by her. All right. How does James Bond's doorbell introduce itself? How does James Bond's doorbell introduce itself? Dong. Uh, Ding dong. You giggled. I feel... Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that, you, got, you got me. You, know, you, got, you, got, little, you got a little giggle. Okay, we got, got a little, little bit you got, of a giggle. You, got, you, got a little, yes. you, you, you can sense it in the breath. <laughs> I, I felt a guttural... T- uh, yeah, yeah, that was so, a little bit, me. yeah. I felt, we can amp it up in post. Good too, job, so. Kim. Yes, thank you so much, Kim. We're just going to end there on that joke yeah. because uh, I felt like... That we don't need to do any more dad jokes. This guy jokes. is tough. This guy is tough. Seriously, he doesn't laugh unless Anthony just n- hits it out the park. He, it's a home run or nothing at all. I feel for Anthony. Oh, I really do. So, I, that's a, why I laugh But so I do laugh at his other jokes. It's just the dad jokes. The dad, I get it. It's fair. Yeah, I, I mean, think about how many times this show, I'm laughing at, legitly laughing at what Anthony says. I feel like Anthony's an incredibly funny guy. It's legitimately. Yes. Legitimately. I'm or whatever I said. I'm laughing at you right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I was trying to say legit la- laugh at Anthony. I got but it, I got it. Anyways, he's a very funny guy. It's just a lot of times, I think it's that Dana almost overreacts to him. I can't and help that's it. why. It's funny to me. You know, I think we need, you mentioned it's so sad right now. I'm sick of sadness. I'm yes. tired. Make me laugh with something stupid and predictable. I don't care. We need to get away from our everyday mundane lives, all the bad news, sad news, sappy news. I'm like, stop. The, it, if you you say this all the time, if you go outside and shake your ha- neighbor's hand, chances are the world's not on fire. Exactly. I mean, yeah. it's like John Stamos saying in Full House, whatever happened to predictability. predictability. The, I don't remember the rest of the song, but, you know, we get the gist and of it. And what else did the little girl say? You got it, dude. You got it. Exactly. exactly. You got it, <laughs> dude. All right. Well, we're going to wind down with a question, two questions from the Reddit advice column. All right. This oh, first God. one is... Ideas for a homebody boyfriend, me, to satisfy his girlfriend's outdoorsy side. By the way, that's not actually me. That's just the question. Been in a relationship for four years now, and we're both very happy. There's no real problem, but I overheard that my girlfriend used to be more outdoorsy before dating me. Now, I'll keep it real with you guys. I'm very much an indoorsman. I'm relaxed inside. I work indoors. The only time I actively seek to be out is for cardio bike rides. I take her out on dates still, but it's not like she's shackled up in my house. But I feel like she would like to do some more things outdoors. That's where you guys come in. I'm looking for some ideas. Please help. Go first. Find a new girlfriend. 
<laughs> oh, whoa, okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, there's two types of people in the, this world. There's people who camp and people who don't camp. And uh, Are you a camper? We, we are not campers. We are not campers. No. Nor I. And, Nor and I. is your girl a camper? She's not. Yeah. Aren't you glad? We tried. We ended up getting an Airbnb, which was a flat piece of land near the petrified state <laughs> forest, and it was not fun. There it's were not bugs. Fun. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's nobody wants to sleep. I don't want to sleep outside on the floor. I don't want to be around bugs. I hate snakes. I do want to. Yeah, no. you hate snakes too. I just had a dream that I was trying to pass through a park in Phoenix, and there were snakes everywhere. Did you see the video with the snake coming out of the toilet? Oh God, I haven't. It was even, that I, Australia? <laughs> no, no, it was here. So he's coming out of the oh. toilet, and because he's trying to get out, he keeps the the snake's head keeps hitting the flush, and so he flushes himself back down. Then he comes back up over. And over, it's like I haven't a ever since I saw nightmare. the video. Like I can't go to the bathroom in a public bathroom right now. Yeah, oh. I keep thinking there's gonna be a snake coming up my ass. <laughs> oh First my of all, <laughs> once again, there could be children <laughs> listening to this. <laughs> oh, there are definitely not children <laughs> listening to this. Don't worry. Okay, and I if have there are, they should learn about yes, toilet snakes. Okay, toilet they snakes. Should. it's like the new boogie monster. Yeah, yes. no, you're right. I, I think that the the guy should maybe plan a backyard picnic. Okay, we don't have to resort to breaking up there, Mr. Man. They've been together four years. Obviously, there's something there. Wasted his time. Going outside <laughs> doesn't have to mean hiking and sweating and bugs and snakes. Get a oh little my. picnic basket. I'm going go to tell you right now, TJ Maxx he's not make- man enough for her. She likes to camp. She wants to be outside and go do outdoorsy shit. So you're not man enough? No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, break up with her. <laughs> hey, you know I feel well. I feel like you could be a man and not like outdoorsy. Thank things. you. Like, I feel like you're. I'm you, a man, but I'm not an outdoorsy man, and so I can't have an outdoorsy. Yes, woman. but she, he, they can have a backyard outdoor experience. That's not enough for her. That's enough for she's her. She's not going to get there. Four years later, she's gotten there plenty, or she would have already left him. I really, if do, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I really do like the compromise though that you're going for, Dana, Thank you. with the uh, like the Pinterest backyard of a couple trees, maybe a pet bear or something. Put something have... out there with some candles, some picnic. Get a get a tent and sleep outdoors. Oh. A tree house, one, perhaps. One time a month. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, but you get some off on, you're done. I'm going to get us a little tree house to sleep Why? In. I don't want to be outdoors, <laughs> and neither do you. <laughs> neither does he. So that's like I said. <laughs> he wants to compromise. He okay. wants a relationship. All right. Well, listen. that's that's beautiful. I yeah. wanted to I wanted to take a second and ask our producer, Joshua James Boyle, Josh. if you had any thoughts. I was Josh. wondering what Josh is doing over there. Do you, do you need a mic? I got a mic. Oh. Okay. He comes prepared. What's your advice, well, Josh, yeah, on your... the outdoorsman? Yo, so I'm kind of in the middle where it is kind of a feeling like if, you know, like leave her, but you do bring in other like good perspective where it's like, try it out. See if you can level yourself up because I wasn't a hiker or like an outdoorsy person, but you go to North Mountain near like 7th Street. Mm hmm. You can hike it. You can hike it, bro. It's but do I want to hike it? This guy is that acting is... like he doesn't compromise something. He said he didn't want to marry a woman with kids. I have two kids. You compromise way more than you're asking. Josh. But I didn't have to sleep outside. <laughs> this is true. Hey, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yes. <laughs> that's where I draw the line. <laughs> Sleeping outside. Could you do? Would you do a hike though? Oh uh, yeah, I've, I've I've done a lot of hikes. I used to like I used to have a mountain bike and I would ride it. And but uh, other than that, I, I, I feel like you're trying to convince us now. Yeah, I think so too. I've been skiing person. a million times. I'm like I'm actually a great like skier. Yeah, but that's not hiking. Well, same difference. You're I mean, sliding you're down that. ice. You yeah. know Skiing is like the most chic outdoors it thing. Is, exactly. <laughs> it is, exactly. Sipping some espresso while you're just it's going down. It's the least manly of man <laughs> activities there is. That's why I do it. Not to denigrate the activities that you do and the type of man that you are. Yeah. but um, I DJ and I ski. <laughs> that's like the least manly things you can do. <laughs> I DJ and I ski. That sounds like uh, an optimum Tinder profile. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I DJ and I ski. For real. And you guys uh, thought I wasn't douchey. That's <laughs> redeeming yourself. I love this. All right. Our last question. Oh, it God. says, how do I get over needing attention? I know this sounds stupid, but I love attention. I usually love to be complimented. And at some points, I'm very narcissistic, but only physically. So, like, I know I'm pretty, and I know that others know, but I want to hear it sometimes, you know? I'm talking to a guy recently, and he's called me pretty, like, once. And after the picture I posted yesterday, I was genuinely pretty sad about it. It's fair to be wanted to be called cute names and complimented, but I don't know. I just want to be complimented more. I'm just not sure how to get over it. 
Any ideas? That was painful to read. I'm this sorry. one is all Dana. That was really painful to read because <laughs> I don't know. You want people to call you pretty. You want people to every say Every girl you wants good. to be called pretty. Every girl does, but I don't know that every girl obsesses with that or, or ha- has the need. Or is looking Somehow. for that kind of validation. Yeah. yeah I, you see some thirst trap pictures, right, online, and you kind of know that that person wants you to say something about it. And I think That's we're true. all guilty of a little thirsty here and there. Oh, yeah. But I'll to show con- the yeah, now and then. yeah, yeah. You know, when you, you remember when you showed your buttocks the other day on Instagram? You <laughs> oh, wanted you that. took that picture yeah. and you posted it. <laughs> I did. <laughs> did you notice a little crack in the back no yeah, i'm just kidding <laughs> oh. i'm just kidding no but i think that i think she needs to look inside herself perhaps yes. and say to herself i am worthy without somebody telling me i'm pretty i'm okay without the likes like you don't have to have somebody else validate who you are with because you you think you look good on the outside i mean does she know she's gonna get old has anyone told her that? We've got some news for you. Does she know <laughs> that that age comes to everybody? And, and let me tell you, it, it, you know, I think that we except for lo- the cast of Friends. Yeah, except for the ca- and the Kardashians. Yes. Other than those people, and they they've just you know everybody gets old. The Kardashians and get better looking as they get older. I, I know. It's true. I know. Yes, like but I think line. that it's dangerous when you need that kind of validation. I think you kind of need to look in the mirror and tell yourself, "I look good," and just be okay with that. Oh, I like just that. Just be okay with that. Look in the mirror and say, I do look good today. Hey, post it up. Put it up on your Instagram. Do what you got to do. But don't worry about your man. Don't worry about anybody else telling you you look good. You know you look good. I like That's that. It. It, just compliment yourself. It doesn't yes. matter where the compliment comes from. Yes. It can come from you. I'm look in the mirror. I'm beautiful. I'm pretty. Yeah. He never tells me I look good, so I obviously don't need that. <laughs> I tell you you look good all the time. Every time I get ready, I have to ask me, do I look good? Yeah. And then he spends 20 minutes getting dressed asking me, what do you think of these shoes? What do you think of this? What do you think of that? You are douchey. By the way, DJ Automatic, what do you think of... This. Of this situation, this. I feel like the girl, they, like she needs validation, and she's looking in all the wrong places, and she's probably sleeping with men also, and doing things like that because she feels pretty for the night, and then hates herself the next day. It's a vicious cycle. But yeah, they, <laughs> she's, yeah. Um, you're probably I, right. You're right. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. but you're, you're probably right. You're probably yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I mean, my advice to her is, you know, maybe see a counselor, or maybe I don't know what. Okay. There, yeah, there's therapy? some kind okay. of therapy or something because. Yeah, there's got to be there's something way deeper going on there than uh, just the the whole surface level thing. I mean, maybe she's got daddy issues. There's something way deeper. Or mom issues. If she's yeah, or yes. mommy issues. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And mo- yeah, and it was a big deal for mommy to make sure that she looked good. Yeah, that could be that too. Mm. She's like needing that constant validation. Constant. Yeah. Yes. I always say to to you know people listening to mothers, careful what you say to your children, uh, daughters, sons, because that that lives forever in the mind, right? If or, you <sighs> never leaves you the things your parents said to you That's so cool. careful what you say oh my gosh all right what do you have to say about this yeah josh? i'm curious what josh is what's your take what's your josh you look like you need a lot of validation to josh. yeah <laughs> he's got I mean, a, it sounds like that's her love language you know what i mean Oh, yeah, that's true. a that's a lot Define of love. Yeah, oh. that's yeah, that's true. So like, I've been through a couple of relationships where like we've gone over like what's our love language, and like when you don't do that and you're giving people like the wrong love language, love language, like it just goes nowhere. So maybe that's just her language. That's what she wants. True. Maybe she just needs to hear you look good. You look. So, what's our love language? Let's talk about it later. <laughs> <laughs> Tune but, in to the Dana Cortez show tomorrow to find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Love language. What a lot of love and a lot of language in this podcast. But we're going to go and end it. So thank you guys so much, Dana Cortez and DJ Automatic, thank you, sir. for joining. Thank you. Thank you for having us, for real, though. Oh, it was an extreme. I just enjoyed this so much. I think you're just a lovely person, and I love your energy. Oh, thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, I love, I love Josh's energy. I love your energy from the moment you guys walked in. No, I'm big on that. I don't know about you. I'm Mexican, so my I, well. Uh, my stuff, man, it matters. That kind of thing matters. I feel like it's real, and you have a positive energy, and I wish you the best of luck. Oh, thank you so much. I really You're appreciate welcome. that. Are you a direct descendant of Christopher Columbus? I I might be. <laughs> Is it the hair? Yeah, I think. Don't tell people that. 
in today's politically correct yeah, I, society, what people can't. Well, he's Italian, to? and then he's like, he's got <laughs> this look. Like, and I was like, man, don't do that. He does. He has no relation to Christopher Columbus whatsoever. Okay, I didn't. I didn't think of that part of it. Sorry. The man did. Okay. It's just like when you see like the drawings of Christopher now, Columbus, he kind of looks like you. Oh my God! I did take the twenty three and Me. I was afraid of that, but I'm I'm in the clear. Okay. No Columbus. He looks like Christopher Columbus or Jesus. Like either one. <laughs> I've gotten Mormon Jesus. More, Mormon Jesus. Yeah. Mormon yeah. Jesus. Yeah. I was wondering. And, and you know what? I went to my friend's houses that were Mormon, and their Jesus on the wall, he's happy. He's, like, really smiling and everything. Did you like that? I liked it because I am I grew up Catholic. Yeah, us, sad us Jesus. So we've got Jesus. Yeah, we got like guilty Jesus. On a cross. Yes. Yeah, he's like, ugh. Yeah. And so I, yeah. I'm glad I didn't get pegged for Catholic Jesus. No, I know. No, you want to be happy Jesus at exactly. least. If exactly. If you're going to be Jesus, be happy be, Yeah, Jesus. yeah, exactly. Be, be the best Jesus you can and be. No Christopher Columbus. I, ne- no. I never knew about happy Mormon Jesus. This is the first I've ever oh, heard of it. Oh, he's got his color popped. He's got Ray-Bans on. He's looking fly. No. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> I thought you were... I don't know. He's not that happy. Because, like, I mean, you never know. Girl, I, my mom goes to church every day. Mine too. Catholic, Mine too. Catholic, you know... You is she, is she guilty Catholic too? Oh, yes. Oh, I feel guilty, guilty right now. I, f- I said a he, naughty word on the podcast. I'm going to pray my penance. Oh, you don't even know. And she goes, oh, my, oh, Merit, I can't believe we would say something like that. Yes. I'm going to pray for you yeah. both. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pray. She's from Minnesota. Oh, yeah. I'm oh, going to yeah. pray for you both. Oh, my gosh. So. My my mom, she'll, she's very supportive, so she'll go to my comedy shows. but uh, And I'm usually pretty clean, but if I say a naughty word, she's, she's like. Oh. Is she the one who got you to get into comedy? She or maybe like not on she's purpose, just, but she's been like she's been the most supportive of it. No, <laughs> careful no, what no. you say to your kids. Wife like, has been the, the wife has been the most wife has been by far the most supportive. Well, yeah. Shout out to your wife then. That. That's dope. She's great. She's great. Well, we'll have to meet the wifey and do dinner or something someday. We'll bring Josh along just for hey. Josh. You, what, what's your, what's we'll your, go to the place he works at. What's your at, relationship the status right at. now, Josh? Oh, I got a girlfriend. Oh, good for you. She can come too then. All right, I'll bring her. All right. Is she Catholic? No. <laughs> no. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> Just checking. Just checking. Okay, okay. Right. We don't want too much guilt. We're going to go right. to dinner and then mass after. <laughs> we'll all go to mass. <laughs> Oh God. oh God! Well, I have to say the rosary after this. <laughs> yeah, I know. At least one decade for me. God. Yeah. Well, I, I also before we go, I just wanted to ask what do you, what would you guys like to plug? Where can people follow you? What oh, you, got going um, on? you know, listen to us on our podcast. Search Dana Cortez Show. All streaming platforms. It's free. Um, YouTube, Dana Cortez Show, all platforms. And then all, obviously our social media, right? At Dana Cortez on Instagram. At DJ Automatic. Yeah, oh. easy to find. Yeah, yeah. just Wonderful. tune in. Um, Stefan, we'll be listening to you daily now. Oh. I like to support those oh, that support us. I think it's important. Treasures. Um, so thank you so much for having us. Oh, thank you for letting me have you. It was a good time. Luz y paz. <laughs> oh. That was very Wait, Catholic. did I get up too soon? Oh, gee golly. That was a delightful episode. Wouldn't you agree? I know you would. You don't even have to say it. I feel what you're thinking. And I know what you're thinking. How else can I support Stefan and Dana and DJ Automatic? Go and listen to the Dana Cortez show. Subscribe. Leave a review. Also, if you haven't subscribed to a comedy advice podcast, woof, what are you doing with your life? Go and subscribe and leave a review, comment, tell a friend, do all that good stuff, share. And if you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram at Satani or a comedy advice podcast and join the Facebook group. We're chatting it up over there. And I do Facebook lives every Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'm getting so good at saying that so quickly. It's just like butter sliding across a banana. You guys don't have butter bananas? Mm, they're so good. I think I kind of want to try that now. They're both pretty solid flavors. Anyway, let's peel that one back up because we don't want to unpeel that any further. And I'll just give you the banana with butter on it and also just give you a word of advice. Duck! <laughs> Did, who, who ducked? Who du- l- Let me know. Um, but no, guys, love you so much. Here's a big old gooch smooch for all of you. Mwah. Love ya.